with Bitcoin up around 4% over the last seven days and all coins doing many multiples of that, it seems like the DGENs are back in the crypto space. So although there is a lot of bullishness hyping up the markets right now, I want to put that into perspective, but not take away from the bullish fun times that are potentially ahead for 2023. We're going to look at the short term and the long term for Bitcoin, but then also extended over bigger cycles, looking at the presidential cycle, looking at the returns for January, and of course, what we could expect for the quarters ahead. Make sure you've liked and subscribed to the channel. I hope you're having a great day out there and that you're ready to dive into another macro analysis video for Bitcoin and of course, the macro markets out there. This is your home of the cycles. All right, guys, let's first dive into Bitcoin, looking at some of the key resistance uh, levels, the pivot points here on the Bitcoin chart, and then take a look at what sort of returns uh, Bitcoin has seen throughout this year and why we're expecting it to be a hopium filled year, although there are going to be particular uh, rejection points and more turbulent times ahead, at least for the first half of 2023 in the case of BTC but we may see some better upside for the S&P. So this is building upon the previous videos we've got on the channel, uh, especially from last week, looking at 2023 predictions, which I'll leave a link to at the end of this video. Enough said about that. Let's dive into these particular points here on BTC. So like I've got here, just over the last seven days, we're up about 3.8%. Everyone's gone bananas. That's because we haven't really seen much happen on this chart since November. So basically, two months now and we've been tracking between 15k and roughly 18k but more or less 17 17 and a half there's a major level here at about 18 and a half thousand dollars so the reason i bring this up is that although we can see some good bullishness these are going to be particular key levels that we need to see bitcoin flip of course there's some shorter term numbers there's always going to be resistance especially after such big breakdowns from the upside to the downside what I've got here is the TIA GAN swing indicator. There's a link to this in the top of the video description. It gives key pivot points on the charts, especially when you're looking at macro swings in the case here of the weekly, or also if you want to jump up a time frame to the monthly chart here. So the key level at the moment is around 18 and a half K. You can see the bottoms were coming in during June, July, September, October. We crashed through it in November, got rejected in December, and here we are in January. So this is basically splitting the main swing in half. That's at around that 18 and a half K level. And of course it was support and resistance so far. Yesterday's video, we looked at other key levels to the upside around 21 and a half K is uh, another monthly swing top. That was the top there in November. And then the other key level is 25,200. There's going to be a lot of key levels because the market has basically been uh, reducing in volatility and the price ranges have been reducing as well. So first things first, 18 and a half K, that's a key level that we're now looking for. This is going to be dynamic depending on where that next low comes in. If November low stays at 15,400, then this is the price that Bitcoin needs to overcome. Like we saw on the weekly, the swings are still down. So lower tops, lower bottoms, just putting in a higher low here, but it essentially turns it from a down to a slight uncertain because we don't have a higher top yet either. So that's BTC on the weekly and the monthly, looking at that key resistance level to the upside. So we need to take that into account when we start to look at some of the other returns moving forward for January and uh, this first quarter of 2023. Something that can help BTC potentially overcome this level is the US dollar continuing to collapse. You guys can let me know in the comments section how many times we've talked about not reading into the news and when everyone else is talking about how bullish markets are. We did this in September basically to a T at the top. Of course, things can always be wrong, so I'm not going to be too uh, outspoken about it. I'll try and remain humble about getting those tops. But essentially, it's when the news media goes absolutely ballistic like it did in September 2022. Top comes in the US dollar, down she comes. We still have barely seen a bounce on the USD, meaning weakness in the US dollar, which like we've seen in the past, tends to coincide to roughly with a little bit more upside to some of the riskier assets like Bitcoin. So we did see a little bounce 
in the first week of January, coming up to around 105 and a half. But this week we've just broken through the lows at 103.4 and we've tested around just the top end of 102. So if this continues to break down, this weakness on the USD could give a little bit more strength to Bitcoin or at least take the pressure off Bitcoin and people start to gamble their money again, the USDs, into the Bitcoin price, which is potentially why we're seeing a little bit of upside on Bitcoin as well at the moment. So continuing to follow up on the US dollar chart as well. Turning our attention to the January returns. So we've covered the US dollar, why things could potentially continue to go up in the short term. We'll look at some more longer term stuff as well, looking at major cycles this year also, you know, in quarter one. But in terms of January returns, this is part of what we're looking at with the the January or the uh, 2023 Bitcoin prediction in last week's video. As I said, I'll leave a link to those at the end of this video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a, miss a video here. And so far, uh, what we have noted is that unless it's a bear market year, like it was in 2014 or it was in 2022, the closing price from January to the next 12 months January, the next closing price has been up every single 12 months from that time. So essentially this pink vertical line is the January date. You can see 2011, there's the close to the next close of January 2012, up 900%. Of course, we're not expecting another 900% return. That's just ludicrous from the current price of $17,000. You know, we're not expecting anything to get close to 150K in 12 months. It would be lovely, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be very likely. Just looking out from the bear market year, something that could be a little more likely going from the close to the next 12 months close, approximately 70 odd percent. So that's from the bottom in 2015 to 2016. And so if we look at this as being a four year cycle year, especially with the halving coming up in 2024, this is probably a little bit more realistic to what we could expect for 2023. So 2015, was also the year before the halving. The halving was in 2016. And then we also had a halving year in 2020, which was essentially this year here. So 2019, January close to 2020, January close. You can see the close here to the next close. It was up about 170%. So di different numbers there, 70 and 170, but either way, they were both up years following the bear market year and every other year from that has also been up even so slightly from 2021 to uh, 2022 where the bear market really did start to kick in. It was still up about 16%. So that's a pretty positive result looking forward 12 months, but I hear you at the other end. Bitcoin's never been through a recession. Recession's coming for the US. It's coming for the UK. It's coming for all the big countries around the world. But I ask you to stop and just reflect on the charts, looking at the major indices around the world. The UK, 2.2% from an all-time high. That does not sound like deep dark depression or recession times ahead. Sure, the market could drop into recession, but we haven't got there yet. Maybe, just maybe we don't get there. We don't know yet. So I'll leave that aside because essentially no one knows yet if we are getting there. Of course, the technical explanation or uh, definition of a recession is two negative quarters. We got that in the US. So call it what it is, however you see fit. The, uh, the Dow Jones less than 10% and the Aussie market less than 7% away from all time highs. So take a look at that before we get too deep into those recessions. And especially this year, 2023 is a presidential election year. Well, the third year in the presidential cycle. Next year is the presidential election year in 2024. The third year of the cycle. Biden's been in for three years, every single uh, cycle counting back to 1933. And in some cases, also 1896 so over 100 years of data here, that third year has been extremely bullish for the markets. In this case, the, the Dow Jones, because that is where the majority of the data is from. So the Dow Jones, 30 biggest stocks in the US. Of course, the S&P is the 500. So the third year, that first quarter is quite bullish, 5% up. The second quarter, 3% up. And then the third quarter, just 0.4 with the final quarter of the year, which is this particular year. So this is a third year of the presidential cycle, just being up 1.4%. The election year, 
does still have some good returns, but it is a little bit more choppy in that first half of the year. And like we saw last year, which was 2022, that second year of the election, which is also a midterm uh, election year, you can see that those first three quarters are basically negative or pretty much no growth whatsoever. This is over 120 years of data. I hope you take that away and look at that for what it is that was expected in 2022. Then that final quarter, 4% up, finally got that bit of a rebound. So looking ahead for 2023, we're still looking at reasonably good times ahead. There's, there's good reasons to be bullish, but like I said earlier in the video, just looking at those key resistance levels for Bitcoin is going to give us a, a big heads up as to whether we're going to get that flip or maybe remain a little bit more subdued for that quarter one and quarter two for uh, the first half of 2023. The other piece to have a look at is the Bitcoin halving. The halving is about 443 days away. That's going to bring us into April, May, March of 2024. This is always changing, of course. So sometime around that late quarter one or quarter two of 2024. What we've seen in the past is the pre-halving rally. The white line here is the halving. And then the, the gold side is the post-halving rally. So the last cycle, which we saw from 2019 to the uh, peak there in 2021, you got the, uh, the pre-halving rally was 2.7 times from that Bitcoin bottom price leading up to the halving. Then we had a 7.8x return from the halving to the peak. So if this is roughly the low here at around that 15 or so K, the 2.3 times return, because these numbers continue to drop uh, each cycle, looking at 2.3 times, could potentially get us to around that 35K in 2024. Now, I don't want to pin that number down whatsoever. I'm just looking at it in terms of the market probably being up from the low, whether it's quarter four in 2022 or, or quarter one in 2023, but probably being up Bitcoin price leading into that halving date sometime in 2024. We'll look at this further throughout the year, so make sure you do subscribe to the channel, like the content, reminding you in case you're finding some value throughout the video. Speaking of which, we need to look at the value here in terms of the Bitcoin quarterly returns. 2022 saw four red quarters, the first time it's ever happened, but we can look at quarter one and it's basically 1% down and quarter three was 2% down. Sure, you could call it four red quarters, but those two were, were pretty uh, very, very small numbers here. The same sort of deal goes for the other years. You've got 2018. So instead of it being a slight negative of 2%, it was a slight positive of 3.6%. The only real year that it was uh, pretty mega in terms of a quarter growth or a, a green quarter in a bear market was 2014. So three pretty significant uh, quarters down, but then one significant quarter up 40%, which was in quarter two. Nonetheless, the bear market years of 2014, uh, 2018, and 2022 generally resulted in a reasonably okay year the following year. So looking at 2019, we saw 9% uh, in the first quarter and about 160% in that second quarter. That was that big pump up that we saw on Bitcoin. But of course, those gains were then later lost in quarter three and quarter four. And so I want to talk about there is the possibility of being quite hopeful and bullish for 2023, it's probably unlikely that it's going to be that year that shoots to new all-time highs. So it still pays to be cautious throughout 2023 and not getting sucked into those FOMO pumps thinking that the bull market could come earlier than anticipated. Of course, we don't have the crystal ball, but looking at cycles and especially after big bear market years, it's not very likely that we shoot to new all-time highs or pump up extremely hard and then not revisit those lower prices. Of course, 2019 did have that pump. That's what it experienced there, that 300 140% growth on Bitcoin, but then it was later given back all the way into December. So essentially it was a 12 months of hype and dump with a little bit of hopium again in that early part of 2020, pandemic dump, and then the market took off for that bull market. So if we didn't have the pandemic, maybe we did hold out above those prices, but a lot of those gains uh, were given back during that second half of 2019. So there's still that extra opportunity to wait for that confirmation. Now you can get in a little bit earlier in the confirmation or 
uh, not get sucked into the FOMO and actually save money instead of getting hyped up into those peaks if you miss out on that particular run. So I've looked at Bitcoin historical returns on the quarterlies. We've looked at Bitcoin on the monthlies and yearlies going from year to year. We've looked at uh, key resistance levels ahead for Bitcoin in the short term, trying to piece all of these pieces of the puzzle together for the longer term outlook on Bitcoin, while we can still be bullish, but remain cautious as well. Now let's take a step back to the broader macro picture here, which ties in to the halvening event as well. This is a look at Bitcoin's annual returns, or at least just the annual candles for the BTC chart. So the tweet, thanks to Rect Capital, you can see candle one is the Bitcoin reaching its bull market peak. So it's basically the year after the Bitcoin halving. So that halving is 2012, 2016, 2020, and of course it's gonna be 2024. So uh, looking at looking ahead, we still have another couple of years until that point. Like we said, about 1.3 years until that halving. So a year and a, a year and a third. Candle two is basically the bear market. We've seen that each time. Candle three, Bitcoin bottoms out. That could be this year, or could potentially have been the end of uh, 2022. You know, we, we bottomed out pretty close there in November, but maybe we see it in quarter one, which then gives us candle four, which is the BTC recovers and begins the new trend, which then leads into candle one again, where we see that peak. And so if this is to occur again, and we get that same sort of cycle, which has happened uh, multiple times already, candle three, this is basically where we start to bottom out. Sure, we could dump a little bit lower than that 15,400 or so low, but in terms of where we currently sit throughout the cycle, this essentially marks the bottom and what we've been talking about being that we could see that whole bottoming process happen throughout 2023. So mix this in with the halvening and also the presidential election cycle being that this is the third year where the S&P usually sees the biggest gains. And of course, people have got some more money to throw around. Even if those money printers are turned off, you can still see governments put out more and more money to different programs like we saw recently with the Biden program of 1.7 trillion, maybe it blows out to $2 trillion. Money doesn't just have to come from turning on money printers uh, in the way of quantitative easing. They can basically come up with some other programs that are there to stimulate the economy. And of course that flows more money into the markets. You can also have more money flowing into the markets from banks creating credits, the same thing, more money enters the system and it does not have to be from the Fed turning on the money printers. They essentially allow the banks to create more credit and that money gets handed out to people for speculating on cryptos or real estate or businesses or tech or whatever it might be. So there's a number of ways that money can come into the system. And like we see with this cycle here that's been going for over 120 years, uh, this is one of those years that we could see some big moves in the stock market, which could also lead into Bitcoin. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We don't have those macro confirmations just yet. Still, we can still be bullish and filled with hopium, but just remain cautious because we're not out of the, the doldrums just yet. Now cover all of this macroeconomics in a lot more detail with our Investor Accelerator members. Link to that is in the top of the video description. Otherwise, stick around for the free content on the channel that is popping up on your left-hand side here. All of the previous videos as well, Bitcoin, cryptos, real estate, macroeconomic cycle, and of course, follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more timely updates. Thanks once again, guys. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, peace out.